Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Obscure Toy Files. I am your host, Chris Boglin Negri, and today we're looking at Hasbro's Transformers 19, from 1989, the MicroMaster Base Skyhopper for the Decepticon faction of the Autobot Decepticon conflict. Yeah, so this is a playset that came out in 1989, uh, just like the Ground Shaker, which I just you know, reviewed not too long ago. It's a vehicle that um, can hold about one person, one, one MicroMaster to drive it. But then when it, it can land and then open up into a like an assault base, like a mini outpost. So you, you can imagine that this would come flying into the battle, you know, rain fire down on the enemy and then land and go and then turn into this little base. So you would have a way to like set up an outpost. And the reason why I'm reviewing this is because I recently acquired it. I've been looking for it for a number of years. Didn't really seek it out, but then realized, uh, found out actually, that uh, Hasbro's new Siege line, which is starting to hit stores now, uh, they brought back MicroMasters. And MicroMasters were from my childhood because I was a kid in 1984 when Transformers came out. I was only four years old. So by the time MicroMasters happened in 1989, I was already nine years old and I knew more of what was going on. So most of my collection that I had, had or had some sort of conscious decision of what I would purchase or get was from the later era, from like, I'd say like 1988 until like 1990 when the line ended. Uh, this is a very nice base. It's a very nice vehicle. Uh, plastic feels good on it. And uh, I actually managed to get it in the box. It's not new in the box, but it did come in it. Now, much like the Skyhop, uh, that's Skyhop, but much like the, what do you call it, the ground shaker that I reviewed the other day. Uh, this one has a price sticker on it, too. This is from some, uh, it says $14.99. The other one was uh, $12.99 at Toys R Us. So I imagine that the regular MSRP for this item was about $12.99. And this was probably sold at like a gr drugstore like Genovese or Rite Aid or Eckerd or any any other number one of Dwayne Reed, CVS from back in the day. Now, this box is just like the one for the Autobots, but there's instead of it being red, white, and blue, it's purple, white, and blue for the for the you know the faction logo and for the uh, Transformers words itself. Now it's uh, oh, it's actually a mixed note. It includes detachable weapons and accessories. Weapons do not shoot, so you know. This is ages five and up. This is the old Hasbro logo. It's always fun to see. Then you get an example of what the base looks like. And is it or ship rather helicopter? And is it in base mode? And then you have the uh, whole thing where it says more, much more than meets the eye. And the purple, white, and blue looks good, and the purple and silver look good, and the green. It's a cool. <clears throat> look, it was definitely, it wasn't the same grid pattern that they had, like, in 1987. Like, once I think they hit 1988, they started to phase out that grid look. They might have had it on some of the packaging. I'm not 100% sure. But I know by 1989, when this started to come out, that grid was gone, and they were doing this line thing where, like, it fades over. It's a cool look. You know, it is, is eye-catching. I noticed it in the store, and I was like, I know what that is. They originally had sold it... Uh, for more money, but I got fifty dollars. I actually purchased this from the people over at Time Warp in the Sunvent Mall next to Emerald City. Uh, they're located in Sunvent Mall, which is between Sunrise and Veterans, uh, Veterans Highway in the town of Holbrook. Uh, the people who uh, this, uh, this is from the I think the guy Steve is the one who owned this. It was one. It was his piece, and I bought it for fifty dollars. So it was I, it was worth it. It was in really good shape. It came with all the parts except for this ramp in the front and then the MicroMaster itself, which didn't bother me because I wasn't going to use it for MicroMaster, these MicroMasters anyway. So getting it in the condition I did was really cool. So let's look, take a look at the box a bit. On the top here you can see a, a vehicle transforms to base and back again. And it says start, and then it shows you change, and it shows you like in transit, like actually transforming. And then it shows you the fish. That's something you used to do on the tops of all the boxes from back in the day. So that's like a, a very like throwback thing. <laughs> Sorry, go too close. I don't have a lot of room. Uh, so that's the side of the box. And here's the back of the box. Where you get like a battle scene. Now these this is the same scene you saw on the ground shaker, but now it's just 
on the back of this box. And there's it's supposed to be Skyhopper, but I don't think his colors are the same. This actually looks like the one, it looks, it looks like the artwork that was taken from the back of the Decepticon Patrol. And it says, watching this Autobot defense base is great would be an exhilarating sight to see. Maybe they will teach those Autobots to try and stop us from seizing control of the Earth. Whoa. Those have become sure or nasty. Or at least we're back then. It's not nasty now. We'll be okay. Okay, so that's the back. Let's look at the tech specs really quick. Zoom in on it. Uh, this is, his name is Skyhopper. His function is Aerial Assault Commander. His quote is, the bigger the boom, the better I like it. He likes to watch things explode, especially enjoys firing his helicopter's sonic cannon and anything associated with the Autobots. Transforms the copter into a battle base to use its powerful molecular destructor gun to alter the Autobots mechanical circuitry. Ooh. Other Decepticons suspect all the explosions and rattles his brain circuits once too often. Now, you know, they, have little, they had enough room for another, like, two lines or so. I would have liked them to flesh out, not even his characters, but the vehicle does, because... These bases, they talk very briefly about the person who's driving it and more about the vehicle, which is fine with me. So these tech specs, I think, are a combination of his and the vehicles. Because he has strength of six, intelligence of four, so he's not a very smart commander. Uh, his speed is seven, his endurance is six, his rank is six, so he's a low-ranking commander. Uh, his courage is eight, so he's pretty brave. His firepower is eight, so his primary weapon is pretty powerful. And his skill is nine, so he's really good at being an aerial assault commander. This was made, in, it was probably made in 1988. When I started seeing him in early, late 1988 and then more in 1989. And then, of course, we have two robot points. We can save those. We have four robot points on what we can get. Probably nothing because the promotions are all gone. It's been decades. So, with that, the bottom of the box, oh, the bottom of the box is just this, too. I didn't show this before. It just shows you what it includes, which is helpful. What does it actually tell you all the, she does see, includes Skyhopper, Helicopter, Vehicle, Skyhopper, Micromaster Jet, three guns, three ramps, Helicopter Blade, Instructions, and a Label Sheet. So that's good to know. So we're going to open this up on this side and pull out the Skyhopper's accessory bag, his propeller blade, and the actual helicopter itself. I'm going to take this box and put it away. So there we go. Let's go deck it out with all its stuff. Got a bit more. Zoom on him. The ramps don't really go anywhere, which is annoying. He's kind of going this big. <laughs> Just put them out when it's. It, well, they weren't getting really great with the integration of stuff back then. Oh, this piece here is just like the one on the ground shaker, so I'm leaving it out because we're using this with. Uh, Prime Masters, we're not using it with Micro Masters. And I don't really need it. Because if Prime Masters have it, it makes it impossible for them to stand it, right? Yeah, so this, this, this weapon actually has a peg, and then a, a socket, and then a peg. So you can peg it underneath, and go like a gun, and can swoop it back and forth. Propeller actually spins. It's pretty cool. Now, how, who are we going to put in it? Well, we have some people right over here. We have from Transformers Siege, we have Blowpipe. We have from Power of the Primes, we have Submarauder. We have Skullgrin. Octopunch. Bomb Burst. And from Titan's Return, we have Fangry. They all scale about the same way. Uh, Octopunch fits in here pretty good. You know, if you take any of his stuff off, see if it's in there. So Octopunch is good to drive it. Submarauder may be too tall. Yeah, his uh, fin gets in the way. Skullgrin and Bomb Burst have to take their backpack weapons off, which are just not really do much anything anyway. But with those off, you can... He's fine. I think this just barely clears his head. Bomb burst, even with his uh, blade off. He's starting to get off. Oh, get off. Come off. I don't want another. Uh, he's probably... He fits in it nice, but... Actually... Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Bomb burst was killed in battle today. Oh, 
<laughs> oh my god, oh no. <sighs> yeah, because he just kind of, like, the propeller just dips, even when it's going straight, it hits his ears. So basically, he wouldn't really go in there. Although he could. Yeah, no, he didn't really. Okay. So they, don't, they can't go in there. They have to go over there. But I know blowpipe can fit, because at least he could sit down. If he fits anyway, we don't have it to sit down. So that's good to do. So he's good. Okay. So we have that over there. Do, do, do. Now we're going to transform Skyhopper into its base mode. So we're going to take off these missile pods, which also double as like wings. Take off this front gun. Take off this rotor. And then the whole thing kind of just folds out. Like you open this here, and then you have like either missiles or guns. They don't tell you what it is, but you can imagine they're guns. They're generic enough. And then you just take this and split it. Let's go there. Two purple ramp extensions come out. They just do it like that. So you take these ramp pieces and you attach those to the base. It would have been cool if they could have folded up in it, but there's not enough room. So they go like that. This is going to get pretty big pretty quick. I can actually, it folds up a lot. It folds out a lot more than the ground shaker does, that's for sure. And then you got this. And you hold it here, and then like uh, just push it up. It's gonna feel like it's gonna. It gives. It's, it doesn't break it, but it has like a nice tight click. You do that. Take these panels here. Fold these out. They pop it like that. Then you just rotate this. It's not like a ratchet almost. It goes, and then it locks in place. And this stays here. It has. It's on a rotating peg, so you can kind of do that. And then what you're supposed to do according to the instructions is you just take this propeller and you peg it into the socket on the back, which I can't see. There we go. You just peg that there. And that's it. Um, then you can also put, if you wanted to use this, you can put this here so that you can have like a commanding guide giving orders and stuff. And then that's the Skyhopper in its base mode. And what you do then is you just take all these other armaments and you just like put them where you want. You can put the gun I'm not gonna put on there. But the, I usually put the missile pods. Wow, it doesn't really hold them. You gotta, you gotta push them in a little bit. Like if you just do this and walk away, it's not gonna do it. You gotta push it in a little. Push it there. Put this up here if you feel like it. If it interferes with the radar dish. So you gotta put it, I guess, here. That's good. And then the ramp would go here if we had it. All right, but the cool part is, like I said, if you have some other characters, like Fangry here, who can turn into a gun, you can kind of fold them over like that. I don't know if they'll fit. Let's see. Not really. You fit there, not really. Oh, I know where he'll fit probably really well. We'll put this. We'll move this here. We'll put that there. And we'll stick finger right there. Boom. <laughs> this looks funny because he's like looking at me. See, I'm shooting my feet at you. And we'll put this here. There you go. And if you want to get extra crazy, you can go turn blowpipe into his weapon mode. I'm really digging all these little target masters with Siege. It's a cool aspect of the line. Now I just have to find some of the deluxes. You can even take that, and then you can peg it in here. And then have like a double gun. <laughs> it will fall off promptly. <laughs> sure, this you can even attach with the knees. Can it go? No. Okay. We tried that. Can't say we didn't try. But this is a lot more. This has about eight ports on it, which is more than the uh, ground shaker does. So you can have a lot more spots to put things. Then you can have like Skullgrin hang out here, manning this missile launcher. You can have uh, Octopunch manning blowpipe over there. Fangry's doing his thing back there. You can put Bomb Burst up here. Then you can have uh, <laughs> this is some rotors just hanging out doing nothing. You can have him tool wield Blades of Death. 
I stand here and be like, hey, everyone's coming in here. I'm ripping them up. Yeah, so it works really well with the pretenders. Like, I'm really happy that uh, I discovered doing this. It was, I just had, um, I had seen this in the store and I bought it. And I'm really happy with it. Like, it's a cool purchase. I'm glad it came with the box. And just having it for the pretenders alone makes it really useful. So I totally recommend it. If you can get your hands on any of these old MicroMaster sets, especially the bases and stuff. I mean, the next size up from this is the Decepticon Skystalker, which is like a space shuttle with a mini shuttle that turns into a base. And that's a pretty cool vehicle. And then the biggest one available was the uh, was Countdown's uh, launch complex. I forget the actual name of it, but it turns, it, it's a rocket with a launch platform. And then it turns into a, opens up into like a base. It's a really cool set. I have to get it at some point. Uh, and they are apparently making Countdown again. He's going to be coming available with the new Omega Supreme or Omega Sentinel Titan figure that's coming out later this year for Siege or next year, I think, uh, 2019. So he's supposed to come with Countdown as well. Um, so totally, if you want to get Countdown's official base, you might want to go hunt down that, uh, place it before it becomes too popular. Yeah, but it works pretty well. Oh, and also a size comparison with the Deluxe Transformer. I didn't do this last time. I have uh, Grotesque from the Titan's Return line, wielding two lion-themed weapons. <laughs> He's holding Lionizer <laughs> as a sword, and has a uh, Sawback, aka Lion, as a shield, which I thought was a good combination. This is how a deluxe looks like with uh, let's fly up in the air for a smidge. This is what a deluxe looks like next to this thing. So we, you know, if this thing was here on the battlefield, and these guys were here. You know, you know, the little. Look at these. Blasted ramps run away. There we go. You know, it's still pretty, uh, you know, like, what the heck? Oh, I got you little, little SOBs. I'm out of here. So it works pretty well. So, yeah. As our review, I recommend you, if you can find this set, buy it. It's a cool set, especially with your Prime Master uh, Pretenders. That is all. Make sure to like and subscribe and look for more reviews as I get ready to do them. Take care.